On this episode, I make these slide valves from Bronze Bar. Welcome to the Fell Engine Project, where I'm building a three and a half inch gauge live steam locomotive to my own drawings. Before we start work on the slide valves, let's have a quick look at where they fit and how they work. This is a section cut through one of the cylinders, so we can quite clearly see all the parts. The steam chest is at the bottom of the screen, and the slide valve fits within that. The high pressure steam from the boiler is fed into the steam chest. This is shown in red on the diagram. As the valve moves, steam is led into the cylinder, pushing the piston forward. The exhaust steam is then released through the opposite passages, shown in yellow on this diagram. This reverses on the return stroke. Now let's see this sped up a little bit. The slide valve is controlled by the valve gear, using the motion of the piston indirectly through a series of levers and connecting arms. Now on to making our slide valve. I start with a piece of bronze round bar, which is cut into thin blanks for the individual slide valves. Once the blanks are cut, I mark out its shape on the face of the blank. Then it's back to the bandsaw for further cuts. With the blank roughly rectangular, the next step is to head over to the mill, where I square the blank and machine it to size. Once the blank is square into size, the next step is to machine the edge features. To do this, I locate the edges using an edge finder and a digital readout, and then cut the feature using a 4 float 10mm end mill. The part is then flipped and the process repeated. Note I've got a stop set up to locate the part. This allows all the matching features to be machined at the same time, without having to locate the edges each time. The next feature is a rear pocket. Once again I locate the edges in the digital readout and edge finder before using a 4mm end mill to cut the pocket. pocket complete, the next job is to drill the hole that the valve rod will fix through. The part is located with an edge finder to ensure it's accurately located. I drill the hole using the pecking technique to start the hole. This is instead of a spotting drill, as the spotting drill would collide with the edge feature. Next it's time to switch the mill vise for a rotary table. I use a dead centre and a spotting drill 
to help zero the location of the rotary table. The centre of the radius of the cuts I'm going to make are offset from the part, so I use a piece of scrap to mark out the centre and locate the toolmaker's vise correctly. This is then bolted down. These are my new toe clamps I've just recently made. If you want to see how these are made, I will pop a link up in the right hand corner. Curved cuts are made in small increments, lowering the coil between each pass. I get a little bit of chatter in the surface finish, but this will be fixed with a finishing cut once the bulk of the material has been removed. I'm using a 4mm end mill for these cuts, which allows me to get close to the ends. Once this last roughing pass has been made, move the y axis in a fraction and make a single finishing pass. This makes a really nice surface finish. Once one side was done, the part was flipped and the process repeated. Once all the external shaping was complete, the next challenge is the internal shaping. Slide valves traditionally have a curved internal pocket. This is what we're going to try and replicate. For this, the rotary table is set up on its edge. For the alignment, the same setup procedure was used as previously. This was done before the rotary table was turned on its end. The part is aligned using the edge of the vise as a reference. The digital readout zeroed using edge finder. One problem I ran into was getting a small diameter end mill to make the cuts required without colliding with the vise. So I whipped up an end mill extension. This allows the end mill to sit further from the chuck. This idea came from a book by James A. Harvey called Machine Shop Trade Secrets. The end mill extension is pretty quick to whip up on the lathe and makes this virtually impossible procedure possible. The run out of the end mill and the extension isn't quite as close as I would have liked, but it'll be close enough for what we're doing. Lowering the quill sets the radius of this cut and I've calculated the depth of cut for the radius I require. The rotary table is then rotated back and forth to make the curved cut. I then step over and repeat this until we've made the full width of cut. Once one half is complete, the part is removed from the vise and flipped over, and the process repeated. We can then move to the next step, just making the final end cuts. For this we've got the mill vise back on the mill, and make the cut in a couple of passes. Once again I've got an end stop set up, I can flip the part and do the other side. All the cuts have been made. One last step is to hone all the faces, removing the machining marks. This is done using sandpaper taped to a sheet of glass. This could also be done using a surface plate, but it's nice to keep sanding dust away from surface plates. So an old sheet of glass is a good cheap alternative. I was really pleased with how these turned out and look forward to getting these fitted inside the steam chest. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Catch you next time.